Okay, we're going to talk about 10-2, arithmetic sequences and series. So in 10-1, we just talked about what a series was, what a sequence was, defined some notation, um, looked at the patterns, uh, talked about some sigma notation. But today in this lesson, we're specifically going to look at an arithmetic sequence. So when we talk about an arithmetic sequence, this is a sequence where the difference between successive terms or consecutive terms is constant. So it is always the same. We're either going up by a certain amount or down by a certain amount through addition or subtraction. So as we do this, the constant is referred to as the common difference. And in our formulas, we're going to see that represented by the variable d. Now to find d, we are going to subtract and we're gonna subtract any term from its succeeding, which also means previous, term. To find the next term in the sequence, you're gonna add D to the given term. So keep in mind, if you subtract, you may get a negative value, which is actually gonna happen when we do this first example. And then when you add a negative, it will make that sequence decreasing. So, um, as we look at the first one, determine the common difference, so we're going to look for D, and then we're going to find the next four terms of the arithmetic sequence, 17, 12, 7, and we want the next four terms. So if they tell us that it's arithmetic, we can be sure that there is a common difference. We have to find it. So we're going to take each term and subtract the term before it. So we would have 12 minus 17. I know we're tempted to see that 17 minus 12 is 5 and that's going down. But when we do 12 minus 17, that shows me the common difference is a negative 5. Just like 7 minus 12 is going to give me a negative 5 as well. So the common difference, D, is a negative 5. So we would take 7 plus a negative 5, which is 2. So that's really 7 minus 5. And then we would take 2 plus a negative 5, which is really 2 minus 5. So we're just subtracting 5. Negative 3, then negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. Negative 8 minus 5 is negative 13. Okay? So as we look at these terms and or these sequences and seeing what they're doing, there's one thing before we go to the next example where we come up with the algorithm. I want you to notice one thing. By the time we have gotten to the, the fourth term, a sub four, which is really here, right? We have 17 is a sub one, 12 was the second term, a sub two, seven was the third term, a sub three. By the time we get to a sub four, okay, by this term, we have, um, well, we're always adding, but we can say this. We have used the common difference D how many times? Well, from 17 to 12, that was 1. 12 to 7, that was 2. And 7 to 2, that was 3. So that's something that's going to be really important to understand when we're looking at the formula for finding the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. We're coming at it down here in this gray box. So you're going to see n minus 1 times d in the formula. Well, by the time you get to the fourth term, you've used the common difference three times. By the time you get to the fifth term, you will have used it four times. So Hopefully when we get to that formula here in a minute, that will make sense as to why it's n minus one, the number of terms minus one times a common difference. Okay, so each term in an arithmetic sequence is found by adding the common difference to the preceding term. So this right here, a sub n, is equal to a sub n minus one plus d. All this means is that you are taking the term before it. Remember we talked about a sub n minus 1 being the previous term in the lesson for 10-1. You're taking the term 
before it and adding the common difference to get your new term. If this continued multiple times, the pattern leads to this formula for finding the nth term of an arithmetic sequence, and this is the big guy right here. The nth term of an arithmetic sequence, with the first term being a sub 1, and the common difference d, is given by this. You would take a sub n, or to get a sub n, you would take a sub 1 and add the common difference n minus 1 times. Okay, so we're going to use that formula going forward to determine some um, given inf or to de determine some information that they would like. Okay, so vocab. First of all, um, a couple of terms that we had yesterday. We're going to take a closer look at today, or I should say in ten one, we're going to look at in ten two. The first one is explicit and explicit formula. These are going to be important today or in ten two. An explicit formula is going to give the nth term, a sub n, as a function of n. So remember, an explicit formula is based on the position. Okay, so these are based on position n. Okay? So then a recursive formula we talked about yesterday or in 10.1 as well. That's a formula that defines the terms using previous terms. That's going to have built in n minus 1. Okay? So recursive formula is based on the term before. Okay, so as we look at example number two, we want to find two types of formulas, explicit and recursive, for the nth term of the arithmetic sequence, so they are guaranteeing me that it's arithmetic, and it is 12, 21, and 30. So first we're going to focus on an explicit formula. So to find an explicit formula, the first thing we're going to do is find the common difference. Which is D. So we'll take 21 minus 12, which is 9. And also 30 minus 21 is 9. So my common difference, you can see, is 9. So to find an explicit, we're going to use that formula, a sub n equaling a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So a sub n is going to be the result. We are not going to have anything for that. But we do know that a sub 1 is 12. So we have 12 plus the number of terms minus 1 times the common difference of 9. So we don't really want to leave it like that. We plug into that formula, but now we can distribute the 9 and combine some like terms to get a much simpler algorithm. So a sub n is going to be 12 plus 9n minus 9. 12 minus 9 gives me 3. So here's my formula. a sub n equals 9n minus Three. I mean, plus 3. How about that? Sorry. 12 minus 9 is positive 3. So you might recognize this as um, linear in nature. There's a constant rate of change or a constant slope, which is 9. That's my common difference. So not that we're going to go into talking about linear equations, but you might be able to see that relationship there, the mx plus b. Okay. All right, so now we're going to take um, and find a recursive formula for this. So a recursive formula must have two equations. Two equations are needed. The first one is oh so simple. It's going to be a sub 1 equals 12. 
we literally need a starting point. We need a number to begin adding or subtracting that common difference to. So there's equation number one. And then equation number two, it's very simply this. A sub n is gonna be a sub n minus one plus nine. That is a recursive formula. So you do need two equations. You need a, a starting term, and then you're gonna take the previous term and add the common difference. And that's a, re a recursive formula, okay? Let's go to example three. Okay, this now says to find the 68th term, which means we want a sub 68. What is a sub 68? And the arithmetic sequence, okay, so they're telling me that it's an arithmetic sequence. That's important because in 10.3, we're gonna talk about geometric sequences. So when they say arithmetic, we know that there's a common difference, D. So we're gonna find it. We have 25, 17, and nine. So we're gonna take 17 minus 25, and that gives me a common difference of negative eight. I don't have to test nine minus 17. They tell me it's arithmetic, so I can count on the fact that that is what D is. And now we're gonna use the formula. So if I want A sub 68, my formula, if you look back up, it tells me A sub one plus N minus one times D. A sub one is, well, let's write it. A sub one plus N minus one times D. So A sub one is 25 plus N is actually 68. We're looking for the 68th term minus one times negative eight, it is decreasing by eight. So we are gonna actually take that right 25 and we are gonna subtract negative, or we're gonna subtract eight 67 times. Hopefully that makes sense. So we'll then have 25, um, Oh, and it's going to be minus. Sixty-seven times eight, and when we do that math, we will get negative five hundred eleven. So that would be the sixty-eighth term. Okay, let's look at B. Now we want to find the first term. So now we're gonna look for a sub one. So the first term is going to be um, the missing information. Find the first term of the arithmetic sequence. So again, we know we have a common difference for which a sub 25 is 139 and d is 3 fourths. So we're gonna plug in what we know. Here's my formula, a sub n, equals a sub one plus n minus one times d. I know the ending term of 20, a sub 25 is 139, so I'm gonna plug that in. a sub one is what I'm missing. And then my n is 25 because I want the 25th, or that is the 25th term. And d is 3 fourths. So 25 minus 1 is 24. 3 fourths of that is 18. So a sub 1 plus 18 equals 139. Carry my math over here. When I subtract 18, I'm going to get a sub 1 to be 121. Okay, so finding that piece of information. Okay, and then another way to spin this in C, we're going to find D find the common difference. Again, we know we have an arithmetic sequence. A sub one is 75, A sub 38 is 56.5. So to get started, let's just write out this formula. A sub n equals A sub one plus n minus one times D. So A sub n, the, so we're finding D. Let's highlight that. D is what we don't know and that's what we're after. So hopefully we can plug in something for everything else. A sub n is 56.5, that is the very last term. A sub one, they tell us is 75, plus 
n is 38, 38th term is 56.5 times d, so that's 37 times d. Ah. No, 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 no. Sorry, guys. Okay. So now I'm going to take and do some math here. I'm going to subtract 75, and I would get negative 18.5 equals 37D. And when I divide by 37, my common difference is actually pretty nice, negative 0.5 or negative 1 half. So in finding D, I know that it's going down by one half every time. All right. So that is um, some examples in working with arithmetic sequences, finding some different pieces of information, either finding the last term that they're looking for, the first term, or the common difference. Okay, we're going to take a little bit of a break on that um, on that type of problem, and we're going to look at something a little bit different. If two non-consecutive terms, okay, so two non-consecutive terms, they're not right next to each other. So we're not talking about the fifth and sixth term or the seventh and eighth term. We might be talking about the third term and the eighth term or the ninth term and the 15th term. So if I have two non-consecutive terms, but I know that they're in an arithmetic sequence where there's a common difference, the terms between them can be calculated, and these terms are called the arithmetic means. If you remember in middle school, you or in Algebra 1, you talked about mean, median, and mode, and the mean was the average, and that's going to be involved in what we're going to do to find the arithmetic means. So the arithmetic means is where you're trying to find numbers in between terms in a sequence. So let's just jump right in and look at example four. Write an arithmetic sequence that has four means, four terms in between 4.3 and 12.8. So let's just visualize this the best we can. Let's write 4.3, oops, sorry, as our first term. We want four means in between there. One, two, three, four, and then we have 12.8, okay? So here's what we know. We know that a sub one is 4.3. Now, if I wanna find each individual term, I need to know how much, obviously I'm going up, how much I'm increasing by every time. So I need to find a common difference so it maybe would go back to example C, where we had to find D. So looking at that, I know that A sub 1 is 4.3. I know that what is 12.8? Well, if I look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 12.8 would be considered A sub 6. So I actually have six terms. I know the first term, and I know the last term. So if I go to the formula, a sub n equaling a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, I have my last term of 12.8. I have my first term of 4.3. I know there are six terms, but I don't know the common difference. So as I do the math, I'm going to subtract 4.3. Let me carry this down here. And I'm going to get 8.5 equals 5d, sub, or sorry, divide by 5, and I get d to be 1.7. Not the nicest, but what that means is I'm going to come up here, and every time I'm going to add 1.7. So when I take 4.3 and I add 1.7, that is going to give me 6 plus 1.7 should be 7.7, plus 1.7 would be 9.4, plus 1.7 would be 11.1, .1, and then plus 1.7 to check would absolutely be 12.8.
So that's just kind of a different type of problem, finding some uh, terms in between two, two numbers that are not consecutive using arith or finding the arithmetic means, okay? All right, then the last thing we're gonna do is the series. So typically we study the sequence and then the series, and of course the series is where um, we add these up. So again, an arithmetic series is going to be the indicated sum of the terms of an arithmetic sequence. Okay, so in these gray boxes, we have two formulas to help us do this. So the sum of A, I want you to notice something, finite. That means we have to have, or we have to know that there are not infinitely many terms. Um, in an arithmetic series, you cannot find the sum of, um, of an infinite sequence. So this has to be finite. You're gonna have n terms and use one of these two formulas. So I want you to look at these formulas for a minute. They do the exact same thing. Both of them are finding the sum. The first one has a sub one, a sub n, and n. This one, there is no common difference built in. There's no d value. You have a beginning and an end and the number of terms. In formula two, you have the number of terms, you have the first term, you have the difference and the n. This one has no a sub n. It has no last term. So some, what you want to do when you look at some of these is identify the information that you have that you can sub in and then go and choose formula one and formula two. You'll definitely want to be able to use both of them. It's not one where you can just pick one or the other. Okay, so in the first one, there's no common difference. In the second one, there's no a sub n. Um, but there are more than one, um, there's more than one way to do some of these. So uh, we'll talk about that, um, I think on B, we'll look at two different ways to do that one, just in case uh, some of you wanna see that. Okay, so find the indicated sum of each arithmetic series. So once again, it's really important that you know that it's arithmetic versus in 10.3, we'll have geometric. Um, and sometimes there's not, um, it's not arithmetic or a geometric. You can't count on that. But since we know it's arithmetic, we know there's a common difference. So what we have for this one, if it's an arithmetic series, we have a sub 1 being negative 5. We have a sub n being 3, 17. Now we don't know how many terms are in between this area right here with the dot, dot, dot. We also have D, two minus a negative five is seven. Nine minus two is seven. So I do have a common difference. Um, so the problem here is that, and it's not a problem, but I have a sub one, I have a sub n, I have D, but I don't have an n. Both of the formulas require an n, so guess what? No problem, we're gonna have to find it because we did that in the first part of the lesson. So we're gonna take a sub n, which I know is 317, equal to a sub one, which is negative five, plus n minus one times seven. So I'm just using the explicit formula To find n so that I can use one of the formulas for the sum. So I have 317 equals negative 5 plus 7n minus 7. 317 is negative 12 plus 7n. When I add 12 to that, I get 329. 
equals 7n, and the number of terms, you really want this to be an integer, <laughs> is 47. Yay. Okay. So now you can use either formula you want. You have everything you would need to know. And um, a lot of you are probably thinking, uh, formula one, please, it looks much easier. And I'm with you on that. So let's go to formula one. And we're gonna use um, the values that we have there. So we've got S sub, we now know it's 47. There are 47 terms total, and it's going to be 47 divided by 2, and then I have a sub 1, which is negative 5, plus 317, and when I do that math on the calculator, you get 7,332. All right, so there's your sum. Okay, let's do B, the 28th partial sum. So we want S sub 28 of this arithmetic series. So here's what we have. We have, um, I'm gonna write it over here, A sub one is 27. I know that N is 28, 28 terms is what we're looking at. And I know the difference, 14 minus 27, is going to be negative 13 and then again 1 minus 14 um, is going to be negative 13. Okay so we've got um, we actually have a sub 1 n and d so we're going to use formula 2 and actually we'll just do this one this one way okay so using formula 2 s sub 28 is going to be 28 divided by 2 and then 2 times 27 plus uh, 28 minus 1 times negative 13 and you might want to simplify that down just a little bit before you go to your calculator you would get 14 and then on the inside you would have 54 um, minus 351 and that's going to give you negative 4100 58 when you add those together. All right. Now let's look at C with sigma notation. So this is what we learned. Okay, so I can't really pause this. Okay. Um, so we're going to go with... Oh, dang it. Hold on. We're pausing. Good. All great. Okay. Yes, this all looks great. No, that's. It's okay. The leaves will come back on there. Yeah, yeah, come back. Okay. All right. Perfect. Yep. Yes, it's great. Yes. Yes, it goes. It's all right. But right there, it's all good. But sometimes it comes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. That's okay. Thank you so much, guys. Okay. Yep. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, guys. Okay. I'm really sorry about that. That could not be helped. Um, okay. So, n equaling 6 is where we're going to start. That is our lower bound. Um... Then we're going to have an upper bound of 28, which means you would be plugging in 6 for n, then 7, then 8, then 9, then 10, all the way until you went to 28. So it's really good that we have a formula for this. So let's see what we've got. Um, 
So when we look at this, our a sub 1, our first term, is really by using the 6, okay? I know that it's not a sub 6, but it's our first term in the sequence, so we would have a sub 1 being 5 times 6 minus 17, and 30 minus 17 gives me 13. And then my a sub, now, how many terms are between 6 and 28? So to find the number of terms, this is a little tricky. You typically want to think about just subtracting 28 minus 6. However, if you subtract all 6, you lose n equaling 6. So you actually have to add 1 back in to get the true number of terms. So there are actually 23 terms, which means um, a sub 23, which <laughs> uh, we're going to plug in 28 here, 5 times 28 minus 17 is going to be 123. Okay. So you truly have 23 terms. The first term is 13. The 23rd term is 123. Okay, so now to find the sum of these 23 terms, we're going to take n, which is 23 divided by 2. My first term is 13. My last term is 123. And when I add those together, I get... <laughs> oh, where did that go? 1,564. Okay. All right, very good. Okay, we're going to end with just a couple of um, real-life examples. So no new material, just kind of taking the information that we get from these and putting them into um, an arithmetic series situation uh, and then giving and answering the question. So we have a video game tournament where gamers compete in multiple games and accumulate an overall score. It pays the top 20 finishers. So you're going to get a prize if you're in the top 20, 1 through 20. First place receives $5,000. That's going to be important. Second place receives $4,800. Third place receives $4,600. And so on means that the pattern is going to continue. So we have an A sub 1 first place gets $5,000. Well, so what we have is 5,000, then 4,800, then 4,600, all the way up to A sub 20. Here's my A sub 1, all the way up to A sub 20, which I'm not sure what that is, but I know that my difference is going down by 200 every time. So I know that N, the number of positions, is 20, and I know that D is negative 200. How much total prize money is awarded? So we actually want S sub 20. So I don't have um, the 20th term. I can use I can use the longer formula, but I'm going to get the 20th term. So A sub 20 would be 5,000 plus 20 minus 1 times a negative 200. So that's 19. And that means A sub 20, the person in 20th place, is going to get $1,200. Okay. So I'm going to take the first and the last terms and the number of terms and find the total prize money awarded. So that's gonna be 20 divided by two, and then 5,000 plus 1,200, which is 6,200 times 10. Pretty easy mental math on this. So there is $62,000 worth 
of prize money. Okay, very good. All right, and let's do the last one. Example eight, Carter has been collecting baseball cards since his father gave him a 20 card collection. Well, there's my A sub one before I go any further. He has a 20 card collection. During each month, Carter's father gives him five more cards than the previous month. That's meant to be the common difference. We're going up by five every time. In how many months will Carter reach 1,000 cards? So that's actually a total. That's a total. S sub N is a total of 1,000. So what I'm actually after is N, my number of terms. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take formula number two, which says, if I go back and copy it, S sub N is going to be N divided by two, and then it's two times A sub one plus N minus one times D. The only thing I don't know but I'm looking for is N. So let's start plugging in. I know that my total is a thousand cards. N divided by two, two times. We started out with a 20 card collection and then N minus one and D is five, my common difference. So if I simplify inside here, I get 40 plus five N minus five, which is, okay, n divided by two, and then I have 35 plus five n equals 1,000. Instead of um, multiplying through by n over two, I'm actually going to multiply both sides by two to get rid of this denominator. So now I have 2,000 equals, um, 35n plus 5n squared. Make sure that's right. Yep. And now I have a quadratic. I'm going to set equal to 0, and I'm also going to factor out a 5. So 5n squared plus 35n. I subtracted over the 2,000. Let's divide out um, the 5 and I get five out here, n squared plus seven n uh, plus 400. Dividing by five on both sides makes no difference, so I still have it equal to zero. Um, this actually does not factor, so uh, we have to use the quadratic formula. Look at that. So n is equal to negative seven, plus or minus the square root of seven squared minus four times one times 400. And wait, that's a negative 400, isn't it? I missed my sign, sorry guys. That's a negative. Okay, so that's gonna be 49 plus 1600. Oh, all over two times one, sorry. Okay, so we have n equaling seven plus or minus the square root of 1649 divided by two. When you put that into your calculator, you're going to get the positive, right? The negative is not gonna make sense. So you get 16.8, which is about 17 months that it will take him to have a thousand cards. Okay, and that takes us up, the, up through the end of 10-2 arithmetic sequences and series.